HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. Hi, I'm Harry Rosenblum, host of Feast Your Ears here on Heritage Radio, and it is my great pleasure to welcome someone who needs very little introduction. I think most people walking down the street would probably recognize her, Um, Tiffany Thiessen, who's well-known from television, from acting, now has a cookbook uh, and had a cooking show. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, and now you're working with Le Creuset, right? Yeah, I am. I'm here actually having some good old fun uh, at the Charleston Wine and food. You know, Charleston is one of my favorite food cities. Uh, this is my first time. So I'm, oh, is it really? It's been awesome so far. <gasps> wow. And what do you think so far? It's been great. I mean, yeah. it definitely, I have to say, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just sensitive to it growing up in the North and having parents who are activists. Mm-hmm. I'm very sensitive to feeling like there's a lot of racial history here. Yeah. Oh, there is. Uh, I mean, you are absolutely correct. I mean, we're correct. next to a statue of John Calhoun. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know, you know, I know. Here in the park. And yeah. I feel like... I, you know, it's unclear to me if people are paying attention to that. Yeah. But, you know, but oh, I, no, love it. definitely. I mean, as a city, it's Well, no, awesome. it's funny because I brought uh, a, a, a dear friend of mine that we worked together, and she had never been here either, and she felt the same way. She's like, you know, it's so charming, but on the other side, it's got a lot of history yeah. that it's kind of crazy not to, you know, not to really kind of feel. But I think feel. that's good. I mean, it draws people here for a reason, of I course. feel like. And you meet people here, and my wife and I were talking about whether or not there's some kind of, like, you know, higher energy that mm-hmm. draws people to places mm-hmm. and that maybe, you know, the world has gotten very populated so we're spreading out from those yeah. places. But yeah, historically, yeah, yeah. people were drawn to yeah. places. Yeah. Right? My best friend uh, lives not a couple hours outside and so I've always had a special place for this for the state. So Awesome. Yeah. Well, I was taking a look at some of your recipes and I have to say I really, I really appreciate the fact that they're not like gimmicky. And they don't present like hacks, and I, don't, oh. <laughs> I haven't seen like the instant pot show up. Yeah, which I no, feel like is no, a thing, no. Right? I mean, not that I don't own an instant pot, but I don't generally cook from it a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, I was at my, all, all of my cooking style comes from the women in my family. So it was my mom and my grandmother and my aunt, and and it all came from just how they cooked. You know, I'm, right. I'm not a I'm not a chef, and I don't claim to be. Yeah. Um, I never went to culinary school. Um, I, I am a I am a home cook. Through and through. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, my 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 recipes are very, um, I, I on the easier side. They're for right. people like me yeah, who you sure. know like to cook and like to entertain and um, family friendly and and uh, really just about cooking good meals and putting it on the table and yeah. and connecting. But they don't seem to have shortcuts either, and that's something I really appreciate. I cook a lot. Yeah. My wife and I have two kids much the same as you and your yeah. husband. Uh, yeah. Ours are nine and five. Yours are eight and same. three. Yeah, so same, yeah, distance about apart. the same, yeah. Um, and I, I watched an interview you did a few years ago, uh, I guess Harper would must have been like six then, mm-hmm. saying that you give her a knife. And when <laughs> I tell it. people that yeah. about my daughter, they, they freak like, oh out God, a little bit, right? Them a yeah, knife. a little um, bit. But I really, you know, I think that's great. So tell me about the first time you yeah. like cooked with her with a knife. Yeah. Was she, um, you know, it's funny, she's uh, fearless. I mean, she really, <laughs> uh, my daughter is fearless. She's, she's the girl that has no problem climbing up the highest tree um, and jumping off of it, literally, you know, and I want to support that. I think, um, I think, especially her being a girl, like I, I want her to be that kind of person. So yeah. it, it, it was no different in the kitchen. Um, right. As soon as she said she was ready to want to try it, I wasn't going to push her. Yeah. Um, but as soon as she started vocalizing that she wanted to, you know, kind of start cooking more seriously, like mommy in the kitchen, then I was very much all about it. You know, of course, I'm very much there with her every single... I of mean, course. I'm still with her when she uses a knife, you yeah, know, yeah, and she's yeah. actually gotten really good at it. Has she I have cut to herself? Say, my, my three-year-old is already starting. He doesn't have a sharp knife. He just has a normal knife. Yep. But he's he's got the motion already. And wow. I'm really proud of him. That's amazing. 
<laughs> well, yeah. I mean, but they follow their big sisters, right? I mean, my of son, course. same thing. Like, yeah. he wants to do everything yep. she's doing and wants to be yep. hanging out with her yep. and when she's with us. So it's very similar. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He makes guacamole pretty much on a daily basis <laughs> if I have ripe avocados. <laughs> That's amazing. So, I mean, as someone who grew up in the entertainment industry from a very young age, I mean, you started when you were eight, yeah, right? I was. Do you, like, how do you navigate that with your children, with them? I mean, they show up on your blog, they show up on your Instagram, yeah. and it's very much a part of your persona now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, having like having gone through it, or do you have anything that you, uh, I guess, uh, this isn't about advice, but like, do you think about what it's like for them to be like adjacent to your spotlight? Yeah. Um, I don't just because I feel like we live a pretty normal sure. life. You know, yeah. like it's not like I'm pushing them out there. Of course. Um, it's funny. I, 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 you know, my husband and I were very much, uh, the conversation was big for us about like, do we show them on social media? I imagine. Um, and to me, I felt like that person, like the more you don't and the more you fight it, the more they want it. Oh, interesting. And I always had that theory and my husband felt the same way. So, you know, I don't, I try not to overdo it on social media, yeah. but at the same time, it's not like they don't know what my kids look like. You sure. Know? And, and you guys so, are a So family. it's not a huge like, oh my gosh, they're out at the grocery <laughs> store. Let's grab them. They know what they look like already, you know, so it's not a huge secret. So I feel right. like, you know, it kind of dies down the whole like, you know, the you know that kind of like craziness of it all, yeah. where I know a lot of celebrities decide not to do that, um, and and to each his own, totally. And I understand why they do it, but I sometimes think that it makes it actually harder. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. Um, do you bring them on set with you? When you're oh shooting? yeah, my daughter um, is obsessed with my TV show, Alex and Katie, um, and not because of me, <laughs> because of everybody <laughs> else on the show. <laughs> Yeah, she loves those girls so much, and she's a huge fan of the show. So, I mean, most of the time we're shooting, a lot of times when they're in school. Um, so it's it's usually like a tape night, or or if it's during the summer, she'll come by. Yeah. yeah. So I used to work in TV. I used to be a gaffer, and I was on the other side of the camera. That's a hard job, man. I mean, you guys, I have, it you guys have it hard too. I mean, uh, listen, it's, well, it's hard all around. Yeah, it I mean, so I, it's, it's different, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. So my question for you, having been in it a lot longer than I was ever in that business. Um, has the food changed, right? The food world has changed a lot. <laughs> I know. And so I'm curious to know oh. if the food, like, how is the food different on set? I think it just depends on, you know, uh, the, the person you have doing craft service. I see, yeah. And I have to say, I am so, so happy with the guy who does our craft service on our show. He's amazing. He's a total foodie like I am. So we talk food all day long. Um, and so we're really lucky to actually have him. Past shows, I haven't been so lucky. So, yeah. you know, I think it just depends. Yeah, our big yeah. joke was always that after lunch, there'd be a bowl of candy salad. Yeah, pretty much. On the table. Yeah, that's that true. Sort of <laughs> that is true. That is pretty, pretty, pretty normal through most craft service. You know, you have to appeal to everybody on the crew. And most crews are like 150 to 200 people sometimes. Right. Um, and everybody has a very wide range of uh, needs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I am curious to know. There is a restaurant yep. based on a show that you were famous yes. for, <laughs> and it is the set of the restaurant. Have right. you been to I Saved by the Max? I have not been. Okay. I have not been. Um, I pick my restaurants um, <laughs> solely based on how good the food is, and I heard the food is not so good, so <laughs> I have not placed myself there, no. <laughs> got it, got it. So I was thinking about this before. Are there any other TV sets, either shows that you've been on or shows that you watch that you think might make a cool might, restaurant? Might make a cool, hmm, interesting. <sighs> That's hard. I mean, I... I it's funny, you, you would think that I would watch TV because I'm in the TV world, but I actually don't watch a lot of TV. Yeah. Um, it's hard. And the With TV kids, that I do watch is very more documentary or I'm, I've got, right. you know, like Chef's Table on or, you know what right, I mean? Right, like right, it's right. that kind of TV for me. Yeah. Um, so it, that's a hard question. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'd be up for a friend's coffee shop, you know, yeah, if, it's, if it sells really good coffee. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. It's hard to say. I was thinking. Like I was thinking. Seinfeld. Yeah, it's like that, too. You know? I was thinking like the Brady Bunch kitchen for like an omakase. Oh, yeah. Like, I would definitely feel like home. I, I did watch that show when I was little. Exactly. I mean, yep. that, that's what I was sort of yeah, like. Yeah, I know, understand. Thinking, I like it. About that. Um, you know, so we're in Charleston and you've been yep. here before. Have you ever seen Many Bill times. Murray? Here? Yeah. No, he uh, apparently has a house here and stuff. Oh, really? And so I, you know, I had been hoping that I might run into him. Oh, I, I will let him know that here. you're looking for Please him do. the next time I see him. So so that that's sort of a segue to a question. So I was sitting here and outside the studio, lots of people obviously come up to you wherever you yeah. go <laughs> and ask for a photograph. Is there anyone that you would stop on the street and ask to take oh a picture Oh, my gosh. With? It's funny. A lot of people think like, oh, what actors, you know, and not that I don't geek out you yeah. know, to a certain degree for certain actors, but I geek out more for chefs yeah. and I geek out probably more for musicians than anything. Sure. I mean, you know what I mean? Absolutely. I think because it's, 
it is different than what I'm what I'm used to seeing every day. Right. So, or I shouldn't say that. I mean, I, I'm definitely in the food world now, but chefs, I, I guess I'm so enamored by amazing chefs that yeah. I geek out a lot yeah. with that. So sure. let's let's talk about your book, Pull Up okay. a Chair. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I love that, like I said before, I love that your recipes are coming from a place where you are cooking them for your family. Very much. In our house, it's very important. We try to sit down and eat dinner as a family. Same. Every I, single that's, night. That's how I grew up. Yeah, me like, too. Like, it was at least six days a week, yep. you know? And, and, and there was two reasons. One, time. Um, my dad, you know, was working two jobs uh, most of the time, so it was the one time that we could actually see my dad because he always left before we, you know, we got up from school. Um, and, you know, it was our way of connecting and talking about the day um, and as a, as a family, truly. And yeah. we also didn't have a lot of money. So, like, going out to eat was not something we did a lot, yeah. you know. It was maybe, you know, once or twice a month. Um, so, it was it was home-cooked meals, like, all the time. Yeah. I mean, money or not, I think it's important. People need to sort of make a choice of, like, this oh, is important, completely right? Completely agree like, with you. And, and it is the time that I get to see my kids. And I also know that as they get older, yeah. right? I mean, I remember my life yeah. in high school. Yeah. I was never home for dinner. Yeah. I, you know, I was always doing some activity. Yeah. I know. And I keep so hearing I spend that time our, with once them the now. kids are getting older, they're going to stop doing that. I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> to strap them down to their chair. <laughs> so, and and your your television show, uh, or your 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 television show. That's a dumb thing to say. No, no, no. You have many television shows. Yeah. But I'm, talking about, I'm talking about dinner at Tiffany's. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, was really based around the idea of throwing a dinner party for Absolutely. people who you knew. Yes. Do you throw a lot of dinner parties? I do. At home? I do. It's one of my favorite things to do. I think sometimes because we do spend so much time with our family, and I and, and it really is the priority, of course, that I do love to still connect with people that I love being around and yeah. and. Have having adult time and I think that is a, always a good balance to always try to have a little bit of that so I'm being in that I've you know been in this business for a long time I've met some amazing people that I've had you know the the opportunity to stay friendly with and stay close with and you know when you're working in TV like you work with them like every day long hours yeah. so you're super close to these people yeah. and uh, so it's really fun I, I always try to have a game night or a nice dinner party with you know with the people that I love so yeah, yeah. the people I used to work with in TV we used to half joke that it was like being at war with people <laughs> I mean you spend all of this and you get super close it's in true a way that's like oh no sort of it's like, like you get real close it's true it's like your second family really yeah yeah now your husband yes. does he cook he does not <laughs> But he does great dishes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he does great dishes. I still need really to teach cool him too. a little bit better on how to actually clean my my La Crusade <laughs> pots. He needs a little work on that, and we're going to work on that. Um, but he's actually really great about nice, that. Yeah. Nice. So La Crusade, uh, yeah, you know, a great, obsessed, great yeah. cookware. I used to be in the in the cookware uh, retail business, and so you've we just sold done a everything, lot. haven't you? I, I mean, I, haven't I mean, what haven't started. you done? Uh, what have I have not flown an airplane okay. ever? Okay. Um, haven't All been right. to space. Okay. Got um, it. All right. So yeah, a few. That's things pretty cool. A done. couple, just a couple. Uh, we right. sell lots of Le Creuset. Great, great yeah. quality. Do you have a specific colorway that is your? Well, like, I I do a have color? a ton of the matte cotton just because mm. it goes well. I've always said that I've liked kitchens that are very neutral because I feel like the food is the color and my, yeah. you know, but I'm really obsessed with the new fig. And so I do have a couple of those and it's looking real good in my kitchen. So <laughs> <laughs> what size do you use most often? Oh my gosh. Um, I, I'm a brazier girl. We mm. use a lot of the, we do the brazier cause I do all my pastas in there and stuff too. Oh. And then I'm a stock pot yeah. kind of girl. Yeah, three yeah. quart. We have a cobalt yeah. three quart Dutch oven. Oh, I oven. have the cobalt too. That's our like I do. number I do. one. Anytime I do Mexican food, I use the cobalt. Yeah, yeah. I love that yeah. one. Yeah. We once we once saved Christmas with Le Creuset when we first opened our store. My wife and I. Yeah. We had a customer come in like three days before Christmas and wanted two matching pots. Oh. Two cobalt okay. five five and a half quart yeah. Dutch ovens, and yeah. we only had one. And Le Creuset managed to get it to us, and it showed up on Christmas Eve at five o'clock. And on our way out of town to see our family, we see, dropped it see, off. See, they're just making memories, man. They're just they're just making it. Yeah, they're awesome. Exactly. I mean that you know, and Le Creuset does that. Yep, a lot. That's so cool. <laughs> um, anything new, food and cooking wise? Oh in the my works? gosh, yeah. I'm actually already starting to um, wrap my head around ideas for the second book, which is crazy to me because doing a book is like birthing a child with four hard corners. Oh god, it is really holy hard. crap. Ola, I wrote one can I say I that a on a podcast? <laughs> I think I can. Um, you can. But uh, but it was also extremely rewarding. So um, yeah, so we're talking book number two, which awesome. is nuts. Yeah, that's great. And then I uh, have some pre-development stuff that I'm for another food show. So wow, but I can't talk about it totally. That's fine. But next it's time, coming. Next time I interview, it's coming. we can yeah, we can talk about that yeah. instead. Yeah. Um, so 
what about travel? Like when you come here, like are your kids with you in Charleston? They're this not weekend? actually because well, there's wine here and they don't allow children here. So it would have oh, been yeah, it right. would have been kind of a tease to be like, hey, I'm gonna leave you all day. <laughs> you go hang out. <laughs> so it was better. And they're in school right now. So daddy's yeah. taking one for the team. All He's right. home with the kids. I'm, I go home tomorrow. So Got yeah, it. yeah. And I mean, you do travel a lot. I do. Right. Um, when you're traveling, do you have like specific restaurants that you go back to or do you like to eat at new places you've never been I when both, you go to a new city? For sure. I'm a definitely a person who likes to return to the places that she loves and I've done that a lot here but I've also had quite a few new ones this time around and I'm always on Eater or whatever looking for like yeah, the yeah. best places or just asking chef friends. Where in Charleston like what do you like here? Um, Melfi's was amazing. That was a new one for me. Um, Chow Bao which I had not done. Um, oh yeah. Last time it was closed when I was here so I was really sad and upset. That was my first so, time when we got off and, the plane. And literally I was like I, I told everybody Everybody I was with, I was like, we are not going to miss it this time. And it did not disappoint. It was unbelievable. Memorable, for sure. And what about um, in the future? Like, would you ever want to take your kids and live somewhere else? Oh, God, we talk about it all the time. I don't know if it's going to happen. Sure. Um, but, you know, we... You know, we love Los Angeles. I, my husband's from Houston. Okay. I, I grew up in Long Beach, so yep. yeah, that's, my, that's my world. My family's still there. But we talk about, like... We have dreams of like farm and all that kind of stuff and Pacific Northwest. And so we just kind of try to build a little bit of that in our one acre <laughs> that we have in Los Angeles. We got chickens. I literally just saw guinea higgs, hens running around downtown. And I, and I literally posted it and said, hey, husband, hey, can you look at those? Let's see if we can add those to our flock. <laughs> and he already looked into it. So I was apparently like, okay. their eggs are incredibly hard. The shells. Oh, really? Yeah, the shells are apparently much harder than chickens and they have a larger yolk to really? white ratio. And, I have and friends do you that have know them. that, is there any taste difference? I mean, there's got to be. Um, I'm trying to, I don't remember there being much taste yeah, difference, gonna, but I just I'm remember them being hard this. to open oh, when I visited friends that kept guinea hens. That's super interesting. Huh. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I would yeah. love to have chickens. I know. Chickens are, New York we have City's seven, tough. yeah, New York City's hard. Even though I've seen Brooklyn people do oh, it. Do. I mean, they do do it. Um, but uh, we have seven and uh, it's been really super fun to have with the kids. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been really, really fun. Oh, thanks for having uh, I'm really, me. you know, yeah, happy to pleasure. sit down with you. Same, and it's, it's been great. Um, how long are you in town? I literally leave tomorrow. I've been here since Wednesday. Oh, so. here since Wednesday. Oh, I've yeah. Been doing a lot. Yeah. Of... I cannot eat anymore. I need to go home. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like when <laughs> I'm on the road. My jeans don't fit anymore. I have to go home. <laughs> I, I need to pull. I need to pull kale from my uh, right. well, from like, my from my garden. I can't take any more cars. That's, that's exactly it, right? When, yeah. when you're traveling, I was in Chicago before this, and I like finally, like after that, I was just like, I just want vegetables. Yes. I just like I oh, want yeah. like I feel like there's not enough. Yeah vegetables yeah. served in restaurants and I guess it's because people don't find them exciting or whatever but I love vegetables. I don't know I, I, I think I don't food. know I feel like California very much has a lot of that sure. so because we can we have those vegetables year-round usually that's a good point so and we grow a lot of stuff at our house which is so much fun and that's been really fun with the kids too so um, but yeah I, I, I definitely not that I haven't had vegetables here and some lettuce but it's definitely been minimal compared to the other meat and <laughs> yeah and, and and carbs and bread and all this kind of stuff that I was having before. So right. I got to get home. Well, it sounds like we do have to taste that burger, though. So, uh, I, I mean, well, I'm not leaving until I taste just, that burger just because sure. uh, my friend from Edmonds Oast told me it's one of the best burgers. So <laughs> I'm I'm listening to him and doing it. Awesome. Well, thank right. you so much, thank Tiffany, you. for sitting down and talking thank with me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. For our freshest content and to hear about exclusive events, subscribe to our newsletter. Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you. Want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community? Rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please join our community by becoming a member. Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening.